that's when we started hassling him over the money, you see. I said, I just cannot make it for 1,200 bucks. And they, and they said, well, sorry. So I came back up, I drove down there, you know, and talked to them, I came back up, and kept on brush ratting and brush ratting. So finally I got a letter and they said, we'd like to talk to you. I never kept track of my sculpture, uh, Carter, and I don't know, now I'm getting older, I guess I, I don't regret it, but I wonder why I didn't, I don't know where that work is, man, I really actually don't know where it is. If someone had asked me, that I couldn't have, you know, I just don't remember what, what happened to it. And because I know I didn't sell it, but, you know, you, some guys say, can I, you know, uh, put this piece in my yard and 
CEO. I just heard recently where he sold it. <laughs> Six thousand bucks. I never made that much in my life. Well, it was the Isn't that curious? I should go down and punch him in the nose. Man. This lawyer I know in um, Miami told me that. I said, you didn't know that? I said, no. He said, she, I think, was in the paper. I said, well, I don't get the papers up here. That's the man I studied with. His name was Zedkin. They call him Z-A-D-K-I-N-E. He was an innovator or two. Like he was with, you look at the, the real books of the innovation of cubism. You, know, you see Picasso as the painters, uh, you know them all. And the sculptors are Lipschitz and Zedkin. And, you know, he came to Paris with Modigliani as a young man. the same dimensions of 
one, the first one, you know. The other one, I think, is 14 or 15 feet. This one has grown to, I think, 23-something feet. <laughs> Uh, I didn't want to get to this length because, uh, you know, uh, it just means more time. And I wanted to have it finished by, by uh, December 30th. And if it's uh, 10 feet longer, it takes that much longer to finish. This is going to weigh at least four tons. They just said, all we can come up with is $3,000, and that's it. And I said, well, I can't do it for that, because I figured it out. And right now, I see it isn't done for $3,000. And, because uh, right now, I've got to borrow some money to live on somewhere. And so I can finish it. I can't just stop on it, like Lance said. He said, just stop on it and send it. <laughs> but, you know, you can't do that. That's absurd. Well, the last one took me six months, the first one. But yeah, I realized it didn't have to, you know. As I said, I changed the one arm, I think, four times. The arm going back. I couldn't resolve how to do it, you know, uh, sculpturally, so to speak. You know, I just kept putting the one on, and it didn't look right, and I'd take a chop through it and burn off the steel, and it's a drag to do it. It's not like in the painting, you know, you just wipe it out. You know, you gotta chip through the bloody concrete and burn out the steel and put new steel in and break a whole new arm. But that's what I said. That's what took six doing that over and over. Again. But, you know, if it was a contract, you say, well, I'm losing money on the job. <laughs> you know what I mean? You heard him say that. <laughs> Times of years, especially live in a slightly deeper water, like 70, 80, 90 feet. And it's, it's much easier to spend the morning killing a few of them and getting them out than jabbing around all afternoon in 40 feet of water. Sometimes we killed as much as 1,200 pounds of fish in four or five hours. It yeah. doesn't take much if you fish in deep water, see. You can kill these big fish, they weigh 70, 80 pounds, if you can dive that deep. And they're down there, you know. So we, we just had to keep on diving in deeper water, just because the fish were there. It's not as interesting of, of a reef. It's all kind of flat, I mean, it's kind of barren and so ledges, but they're there. Well, I had no way to make a living. It was the best way. You make friends with them and then kill them. It's terrible, I'm not gonna do it anymore. It's their home. You take them out of that. It's over, you know. I got tired of it all. I haven't been diving one time since I've been here. There's a really superb reef right off Hog Island. That's what I took Lance when he was a boy. I used to, I used to take him, I'd, and he'd put his arms on my neck and would breathe, you know, as I see, so you ready? He said, yeah. I said, no, when you get, like you want air or you don't want to stay there, or, you know, pressure hits on his ears. I said, that never bothered me. I just said, take your chin and hit me on the back and we'll come up. Never did it, you know. I said, swim around on the bottom with him. I'd run out of air before he did. <laughs> I'm going to cut it. 
But see, like this is designed on your arm. I'm going to cut it right, right in him, the same way the Greeks used to do. Over oh, Greek, I say. To me, Don Sutter is the greatest sculptor of Florida. That's the first thing, because they brag a lot, you know. I say, me, Don Sutter, the greatest sculptor of Florida. Carved this, and they put the money right on it, see, for 3,000 bucks. You know, we didn't devastate any reef. We moved on, man. I learned that from a boy, you know. I saw that me and Art Pinder ruined those reefs. And I contributed to it. Which reef? The whole Florida Keys.